In a world of bog standard sports games that continually push you toward ultimate team modes in the hopes that you'll spend your real world dollars on packs. Tape to tape goes the opposite route with an arcade style hockey game that'll have you jumping out of your seat when big goals are scored. For transparency, we've been paying attention to Tape to Tape since its Kickstarter, which Waba Plays has backed. We've also had Hastan, Tape to Tape's community manager, on our podcast to talk about the game. Despite all of this, we are a YouTube channel and podcast that believes in reviewing a game based on its merits of the game alone. The game is not good. Despite whatever relationship we have with the company or developer or publisher, we will tell you that it's not a good game, but we'll tell you why. I am happy to report, however, that Tape to Tape is excellent. In fact, it is incredible. There's a big wrinkle that makes Tape to Tape stand out against its competitors. This game is a roguelite. This is going to be the major sticking point for most sports gamers. In normal sports games, there's always advancement. Franchise modes where you play a schedule will move you on to the next day, win or loss. In Ultimate Team modes, you get another crack at playing someone else. In Tape to Tape, a loss means your run is dead in the water and you start over. Welcome to the roguelite genre, my friends. If you've played games like The Binding of Isaac, Enter the Gungeon, Hades, or Dead Cells, for example, and you should play those games, you should already be used to the enter, die, repeat of a roguelite. You enter a level or a dungeon and eventually you get whooped on and you start over. Tape to tape, honestly, same way. You're Angus McShaggy, a hockey bro turned golf bro who goes back to being a hockey bro to bring peace to a land where winters are shorter, rinks are melting, and cultic hockey players are running amok. To do this, you'll need a teammate and some bench warmers, which are your three other teammates on the ice in a certain set of skills. They do have are a very particular set of skills. Skills I've acquired over a very long career. Skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. These skills are broken down into two parts. Actual skills and talents. The skills are essentially power moves that you can trigger. They come in all forms like the tomahawk, which allows you to throw your stick at an opponent, or yo-yo, which allows you to throw the puck and then recall it to set up some incredible looking one-timers. There is a vast array of skills that you can unlock through the campaign, and a lot of them are truly out there. Things like Disco, where you can make the opponent start dancing. F uh, gas, where you let out a fart and it pushes your opponents away. Then you have Talents, which are passive skills that you can assign to any player on your team or overall bench warmers. Team Artifacts will give those bench warmers things like 20 plus shot accuracy or 30 plus checking while assigned talents will do things like grant a player plus 40 temporary shot power after receiving a pass from a player that has the talent assigned. These skills and talents are crucial in building the type of team you want to move through the three act campaign. Building your team, not just Angus, not just your name superstar partner, but the whole team creates a deep system where talents and skills need to be assigned carefully. A well-oiled machine of a team will take you deep through this campaign. All of this stuff, all these skills, all these talents, all these superstars can be acquired with rubber. Rubber are pucks that you've won throughout your travels in the campaign. Whether you lose in your first elite game or your last, which just happened to me while I was recording, it's not a fun experience, honestly. Your rubber will carry out throughout your journeys. You will use rubber to permanently increase Shaggy's attributes as well. Once you've selected your teammate and are assigned your bench warmers, time to hit the ice. You're going to play a lot of hockey, but some of those games won't end your run. The only time a loss will send you back to the beginning is when you're facing elite or boss teams. Other games will be against this team called the Spartans where the first goal wins. Winning these games will get you a trio of talents where you can choose one to assign to anyone on your team. Losing these games doesn't mean anything, but does carry a lot of shame. I've lost a couple of those games, you feel bad. You feel shame, you know, and then you get free. Hockey isn't the only thing you'll do throughout this campaign. You'll be able to choose branching paths where there will be challenges, see the Spartan team I just talked about, 
or events or trainings. Events will give you random choices that can have a positive or negative effect on your team. For example, your goalie can get gas. We talked about it earlier. Your goalie essentially farts, which pushes the puck away, but will remove the ability to make glove saves or it'll change how your goalie looks or interacts with the puck. Training sessions will give you a choice to increase uh, your overall stats, something like a plus eight to shooting accuracy or gives everyone a plus overall, which increases all of your stats plus whatever. Every act ends with a boss that I'm not going to spoil because the bosses are insane. But none of this, none of this would matter if tape to tapes gameplay wasn't good, but it is. It is a fluid arcade hockey experience that will have you nostalgically thinking about games like NHL hits or two on two open ice challenges. Unless you have a boost talent like Dash, there is no speed burst in this game, which adds to your depth of team building. Attributes actually matter in this game. Hitting is a one button press where you either splay your opponent across the ice, you shake them off the puck, or they just don't do anything because your player is smaller than your opponent. Shooting and passing, it's clean, crisp, feels really, really good. Truly is a wonderful experience, which is really hard to talk about. How do you accurately describe a true arcade hockey experience? It's easy to talk about games when the gameplay is not good, but it's hard to talk about gameplay when it is good. Because it's good, it's something that needs to be experienced. This is not NHL 23, so if that's your expectation on the play side of things, you're going to be vastly disappointed. Folks, it is arcade hockey. It feels great. And it runs great. I have an RTX 3070 and a Ryzen 7 5800X, and the game is running like a dream. I would expect smaller indie titles that are less than four gigs to run exceptionally well on my machine. But in the current gaming space where PC optimization isn't really a thing, you can wish in one hand and spit in the other and see which fills up first. The tape to tape. Solid 60 frames throughout my 10 plus hours of playing this game. No stuttering, no hiccuping, not a single frame drop. The game is buttery smooth. Tape to Tape is currently $20 on Steam and sounds like it will eventually make its way to the console market. It is an early access, which means you can expect some bugs, but the development team has been very responsive to feedback on their Discord. If you are looking for a wonderful arcade hockey experience with a good roguelite progression system that will have you testing out different team builds and laughing your way through multiple playthroughs, tape to tape is good for you. It comes highly recommended from this puckhead. If you enjoyed the review, please hit that subscribe button here on 3Dads on the Console. Thank you so much for joining us today. Have yourselves a great week.